I found a big problem with my circular chestbot. Now, I'm new to programming with AI algorithms, so this was inevitable, but I think the story of what went wrong is pretty interesting. As I stated in my last video, I made my circular chestbot using the Minimax algorithm. In short, this algorithm works by checking all possible moves in a given position, then checking all of the legal moves in each of the resulting positions, and so on and so on. For games like chess, you can only do this a few times until the number of positions is just way too large to calculate. Once we get down to a certain depth, we have to evaluate each position at face value by human means. This could include material value, piece positioning, king safety, and so on. The algorithm then works its way back up the tree, and assumes both black and white pick their best move. This ensures that the bot doesn't just go for easy captures and checkmates without thinking about what the opponent might do to defend against it. And this is where the problem starts. How do you evaluate a static position? In low-depth applications like a chess bot, evaluation is almost always more important than depth since a theoretical perfect evaluation function could find the best move with a depth of 1. But I also had to be careful not to make the evaluation function too complicated, since it would have to run potentially millions of times per move. Among the most common elements of an evaluation are material value and piece square tables. A piece square table is basically a chart for each piece that says how strong the piece generally is on any given square. This isn't enough to evaluate a position, but when combined with other evaluation techniques, a good set of piece square tables will steer the pieces in the right direction. I decided to keep my evaluation simple, since there really isn't any developed theory for a circular chess. The three elements that I decided to use for my evaluation function are material value, a piece square table, and an offense-defense score, which basically rewards a player for having pieces defended by their other pieces and punishes them for having undefended pieces that are under attack. As for the piece square tables, I used common tables that I was able to find online and modified them to work on a circular board while maintaining their spirit. To oversimplify, it rewards pieces for being in the middle, especially knights, and rewards the player for having pawns further up the board. Now, finally, we get to the root of the problem, the material value. The obvious way to do this is to add up all the pieces on the board using established values for each type of piece. And this is what I did, but this causes a very interesting problem. To explain this, let's look at a minimax tree. The computer actually works backward up from the tree, but this problem is much easier to explain if we look at it the other way. For each step in the tree, the bot chooses the move that will eventually lead to the best outcome for the player. The main advantage of running a bot at high depth is that this eventually is pushed down several moves. For example, a bot with a depth of 1 might decide to capture a defended pawn with their queen, since it would lead to a better material score than if it had not. But a bot with a depth of 2 would know that the other player can just capture back. So what does this mean for my bot? Well, pushing the problem downward does not mean we get rid of it completely. For simplicity, Let's assume that the bot is only looking to maximize material value. When it gets to its final decision of the tree, going downward, the moving player simply looks for the resulting position with the highest material value. This means that their only incentive is to capture the piece of the highest value without any consideration for what might come next, even if that capture is as horrible of a move as capturing a defended pawn with your queen. Since this miscalculation happens so far down the tree, it won't cause any immediate blunders, which is how it flew under my radar. The bot would still play fine moves, but it would be noticeably more aggressive at odd number depth values, and noticeably more defensive at even number depth values. At odd values, the bot would consider the best lines to be the ones that allow a piece, often the queen, to safely get into position and then capture the highest valued piece on the last move, regardless of safety. At even values, the bot would do whatever it could to block the other player's pieces from safely getting into striking range of its high valued pieces on the last move. Without understanding this at the time, I decided to use an odd value depth for every level of my bot since the aggression did make it a lot stronger than an even-valued depth. The result was a bot that was great at capitalizing on blunders, but would never try to get a good position, instead just going for cheap attacks that only worked some of the time. This likely explains why I got destroyed by the bot in my previous video, but within an hour of releasing it to the public, at least two people in my Discord had beaten it at the highest level. The solution that I came up with for this problem is something that I'm calling implied captures. It's very intuitive, so I'm positive that I'm not the first person to come up with it, but it works like this. For each of the resulting positions at the final depth, my new material value function checks each piece of the color that had just moved. If that piece is under attack, I check to see if it is defended. If it is not defended, the bot assumes that the piece will be captured on the next move, and gives it a value of 0. If it is defended, I check if its value is higher than the attacking piece's value. If it is, the bot assumes that the trade will take place, and gives it a value opposite to the attacking piece, so that the values will cancel out. If the value of the attacking piece is greater than or equal to our piece, or if the piece is not being attacked at all, it keeps its full value. And with that change, the bot is a lot better at finding good moves, and is a lot less aggressive with the queen early on. There are still a few problems to sort out, 
namely one that causes the bot to throw all of its pieces away for useless checks in the endgame, but it's getting a lot better. I've been experimenting with other algorithms, specifically the Monte Carlo tree search and pure Monte Carlo algorithms, but I haven't been able to find anything that I like quite yet. I've also been looking into implementing machine learning using Unity's ML agents. It will take a while to implement, but I can confidently say that that is coming soon. And that's what's been going on with my game's development lately. If you've tried out the bot, I just want to say thanks for putting up with the shortcomings, and I hope you've enjoyed the experience despite them. I'm excited to share more as I continue development, and I hope to see you in the next video.